Hey guys, welcome back to the Cop TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. I hope you're all doing well. Smash that like button. Let's get your comments in on this video. And if you haven't already, what are you playing at? Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Massive shout out to our partners for this video, footballprizes.co.uk. Let me show you a little bit about how it works over on Football Prizes, right? For example, last night, this competition was live. We put it on our stories. We were telling you to enter this uh, prize competition. It was assigned Dominic Soboslai and Luis Diaz uh, frame, which had the both in the same frame. And you could have won this for as little as three ninety five for a ticket. There was 500 tickets. Uh, the winner was announced on Facebook. I actually, I, st I stuck in a little ticket because I thought I want that for myself. Wasn't successful. However, not to worry, because if you go on the competitions section of the website, they have a new one for us. And I will scroll down and show you it now. Look at this one, right? It's a huge Liverpool competition, this one. We've got Jurgen Klopp, signed and framed shirt. Um, and again, you can win this for as little as £3.95. I've put the link to this competition in the description. A lot of you guys from the Cop TV socials went ahead and and uh, and signed up and bought one, if not more, tickets. This one has still got six days to go. So we're going to be doing a competition once a week for a month, just on the first one. This second one right here, I mean, listen, I know Arnie Slot is our manager. I know we shouldn't keep looking back in the past, but Jurgen Klopp signed shirt. And if you zoom in a little bit, it looks absolutely incredible. Klopp number one, and it's signed as well. So, guys, there are 399 tickets, right? Yesterday, there was 499, which means you've got a 20% better chance of winning this shirt if you only buy one ticket, right? It's cheaper than a pint, right? If you're under 18, it's cheaper than, I don't know, a, uh, a train ticket to town if you live in Brunswick. All right. Um, there's obviously more examples. This is what tea and coffee cost these days. But guys, six days left, six hours and 31 minutes. I am going to be putting this across the socials as well. So if you miss it on this live on this uh, video, you can see it on our socials. But just to remind you, the ultimate tribute to the most successful Liverpool manager in the Premier League era. Um, and then again, as you know, there is a uh, further 17 chances to win a Sadio Mane, Thiago, Diogo Jota and Andy Robertson signed shirt. But this one, guys, it's it's as good as it sounds, right? 395, enter yourself and you could be going home with this bad boy shirt signed and framed by Jurgen Klopp. So guys, as I said, link in the description. If you want to head over to Football Prizes, you can via our link. Get involved, right? You must be in the UK. You must be over 18 to enter. But guys, £3.95 and you could be walking home with Klopp signed shirt and framed as well. So it really doesn't get much better than that. Again, the link in the description if you'd like to uh, to join in. Um, right. This video is, of course, on the radar. It's our transfer show. Um, let's give you an update, first of all, on the goalkeeper coming in um, to Liverpool. It's Georgi Mama Dashvili, uh, the 23-year-old, six-foot-six Georgian from Valencia. He's currently at Valencia. Um, has obviously raised the eyebrows of Liverpool um, scouts. We are very close to signing him. It looks like the goalkeeper will join Liverpool. But just to add on, uh, this is what the independent have got. The Reds won't see the Georgian until 2025, even if they close the deal this month. It says here that Alisson is set to remain the first choice goalkeeper for this season. But the Georgia international could represent some succession planning as Liverpool look to the future. Um, Eight years younger than Alisson, who has been obviously in goal since 2019. Apparently, he made the most saves at Euro 2024. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, knowing that, I mean, it's good for him, of course, but maybe he needs to have a word of his defenders. Um, he's uh, 29 saves at the Euros and he helped Georgia to be fair to them. They reached the last 16, which is fantastic for them 13 clean sheets in La Liga last season um, I actually watched him briefly the other night play against Barcelona they were 1-0 up against Barca and uh, unfortunately they lost 2-1 in the end um, but listen he's he's so big he commands the space he commands the goal and he gets out quickly you know he makes himself as big as possible and on paper if you just try and remove yourself from knowing that Alisson is our goalkeeper currently, on paper, 
you know, top goalkeepers these days, they can go for 75 million. They can go for, um, you know, more money than that. We've seen Alisson was obviously one of them, Kepa as well. Um, I mean, listen, on paper, for the money, it's a good signing. This kid's obviously got a lot of potential and, you know, we should be proud to have him in our goal one day. But the interesting point to, to maybe remember about this uh, signing is the fact that Alisson is still only 31. Um, and in my opinion, has a good five or six years ahead of him in Liverpool's goal. When you look at the likes of Edwin van der Sar, when you look at the likes of David Seaman, when you look at the likes of all the top goalkeepers, the Schmeichels, the, um, the David De Gea's, obviously he's still playing now well in his 30s for Fiorentina. Um, I'd say really to, to almost move a goalkeeper on um, because of maybe a lack of form or the age. I don't think you should be doing that until they're at least 35. At least 35. So, as we know, goalkeepers have uh, a longer shelf life than especially defenders and attackers. Midfielders can go on for a lot longer as well. But at 31, still not 32, I believe, and again, let me know in the chat, in the comments down below, what do you think? I believe that Alisson still has a good five years left in, in Liverpool's goal. Now, this signing, um, knowing that, you know, Cuevin Kelleher could eventually leave Liverpool, it does future-proof Liverpool. Obviously, we're not going to see this guy for another year. There were rumours that Bournemouth maybe wanted him on loan for this Premier League season, but it looks like he is going to stay at Valencia, which is which is fine. He's settled um, and hopefully he'll just improve and, and obviously try and get Valencia into Europe. But the interesting point for me is that Unless Allison has said that he's looking to move on in the next year or two, I don't think Liverpool would have made this signing. Now, again, 31 years old, <coughs> is the best goalkeeper in the world, without question, for me personally, especially since he's joined Liverpool in 2019. 2018, I should say. Um, I don't like the fact that Allison maybe feels it's time to move on in the next year or two, knowing... You know, if you look around at all these other goalkeepers I just mentioned, they were playing well into their at least 35, 36, 37, 38, some of them. And if it does play till 38, you wouldn't even need to worry about another goalkeeper for the next seven years. But being more realistic, knowing, you know, contracts, etc. Um, I still want Alisson to play for us for at least another five years. Now, where does that leave uh, Mamadashvili? Where does it leave Cuevin Kelleher? Well, to be the best, you've got to replace the best. And as much as I love Kelleher, and I do want him to stay this season because obviously Mama uh, Dash really isn't coming till next year. For me personally, it does worry me a little bit knowing that, well, what does the future of Liverpool's goalkeeper look like? Will it be Alisson in three years? Will it be Mama Dash really? I'm not too sure. But let me know in the chat. This is an important one. You know, me and Doyle touched on it in our podcast last week. The goalkeeper is the most important and the hardest person and player to uh, replace in the squad, especially when it's Allison. So at the age of 31, um, he's only about three months older than me, to be fair. Uh, no, about seven months older than me. Um, and I feel like I'm in, but no, I'm not. My prime is about 20. I'd say 21 in terms of being a footballer. But Allison must have one eye on the door then if he's happy to allow Liverpool to almost future-proof that goalkeeping slot. Also, how does um, Kelleher feel about this move as well? Does that mean that he's now even further away from the starting eleven from next year? By that point, he probably would have left. You've obviously got Jaros in goal as well, the Czechia keeper. So, talk to me about the future of the Liverpool goalkeeper. Will it be Mamadash really coming in as number one next season? Will he come in as a number two and almost learn from the best and then maybe the season after that, he becomes the number one? Do you think Alisson has almost green lit this this transfer. Do you think he said, right, that's the one who I think is going to replace me, get him sorted, put him on loan for a year, and then by the time I'm ready to leave in two years, he can step up to the plate? There's a lot of uh, questions to be asked around this one. So let me know in the chat. Does Alisson stay as number one? I would like him stay as number one for at least five more years, four more years, which means that Mamar Dash really would be happy, well, would have to be happy to be a number two in that period, um, you know, when he joins us next year. Where does it leave Cuevin Kelleher? A lot of questions, but for me personally, yes, it's good. Yes, it's future-proofing. Yes, it, on paper, it's a good deal. 29 million, I think, in pounds for a young goalkeeper who, you know, plays and starts for his country at tournaments. Um, kept uh, a decent amount of clean sheets, probably a one in three from last season in terms of clean sheets. 
Um, and on paper, it's all good, right? But we still do have the best goalkeeper in the world. And I don't want him going anywhere, if I'm honest, from a selfish point of view for the next four years. He might also think, well, I've done it at Liverpool now. I've won everything. Time to go and play back in Brazil or maybe go to Saudi or go to America or somewhere in Europe, maybe Italy or Spain. Um, so, yeah, let me know in the chat how you think this one goes down. I still want Alisson in the goal. But again, I am happy at the same time that Mamadashvili will be coming to Liverpool, it looks like, from next year after staying in Valencia on loan. Um, right, next up, it was the PFA Awards last night and Virgil van Dijk became one of only few centre-backs to be included in it for the fourth time. Let's not forget the fifth time he only wasn't in it because he got a horrific injury um, from uh, the goalkeeper that shan't be named on this channel. So I don't want to get demonetized, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, but Virgil van Dijk was at the awards last night. Um, and you know what? He was dripped out last night. He came with the umbrella with his uh, with his partner. I'm going to give you a little glimpse now of what he was wearing last night. Not that it is all about what he was wearing, but as you can see, he's got the old uh, the flares on pretty much. We called these jack-ups at school. He's got the smart shoes on and uh, the suit. And look at that, man. I mean, if he wasn't a footballer, this guy would be a model. He would be, he's very smart and intelligent as well. So he could be a world leader. There is not much really that Virgil van Dijk can't do. Um, and this person has said, Virgil, no longevity van Dijk now has the same amount of PFA team of the year appearances as insane longevity, Terry and Vidic. Van Dijk was already by far the best defender in Premier League history as an individual. But now you can't even use the longevity argument against him. I mean, he's been around for a while now at Liverpool and he continues to lead. He continues to evolve. You know, he's, um, his passing range is, is still incredible, as you saw with, Van da, uh, with Salah's goal the other day. But my question to you, we know it, right? We know it. But my question to you guys at home is, has Van Dijk now absolutely cemented himself as the best Premier League centre-back of all time let me know in the chat I mean I think he has you know he's if he's not number one then he might be number two the ones that I would put next to him are Rio you know I'd have John Terry there as well um, but I do think that those two and Van Dyke maybe sit in their own bracket and then just underneath that ever so slightly and I, again I don't want to be offensive but ever so slightly you know it's looking like uh, the likes of a Tony Adams a um you know, Sol Campbell, a Vidic, uh, Stam, these kind of guys. I'll put Saliba in that as well, actually, but he's obviously still got the longevity um, kind of still against him. He needs more time and more and more years in the front. But for me personally, Van Dijk has to now be the out and out best centre back in the Premier League, four in a row uh, for team of the year. That's sensational. And do you know what? It was backed up by Saliba because last night, I think it was with the Daily Mail, Saliba did a winner stays on. And the only person that he said was better than Van Dijk, who wasn't ever a Premier League player, was Sergio Ramos. Um, so he even said, you know, Van Dijk was better than him. And I think there's that respect. Um, he's obviously a very calm and collected bloke. And if you met him as a fellow professional, he'd be very mm -hmm. respectful and he'd tell you how good you are. So listen, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Van Dijk getting another PFA team of the year. And again, no matter what any fan tells you, I've had Arsenal fans saying Saliba's better than Van Dijk. Whatever anyone tells you, listen to the fellow pros, right? If the PFA and the um, you know the delegates within the PFA, which are the players, his fellow professionals, are telling you that he's the best centre-back still and he's getting in team of the year, even when Liverpool finished third, right? Listen to them because Van Dijk goes without saying, right, he's, in my opinion, the best um, centre-back in the Premier League of all time. So if you agree with me, let me know in the chat. And if you don't, also let us know as well. Just before we go, Joe Gomez, right, um, talks with uh, Newcastle and Mark Gay have, have kind of stalled. I do think there's going to be a couple of twists and turns. There are just around nine or ten days left in the transfer window now. So this time um, on Saturday night next week, uh, around midnight, it closes and then you are obviously looking um, to maybe bring in another number six, maybe bring in another centre-back, still raising funds at, at this time as well. And um, and yeah, Joe Comez, I'd keep him. I would keep him. I know that we're looking to uh, to move on Set Bandenberg. You know, by Leverkusen have got in contact again about him after Brentford had obviously put a bid in the other day. 
Liverpool want 25 mil for him, um, which I don't think is is absurd considering he's got experience at Liverpool, uh, Premier League winner at Liverpool, I believe. Um, and, you know, has gone on to Germany and, and is still young. So good football player has been given a lot of time by Arnie Slot in the preseason. So Joe Gomez, Sepp Bandenberg, maybe two centre-backs that are still going to be heading away from Liverpool and Anfield. But listen, guys, that was your On The Radar Today, the goalkeeper will be coming in next year, Mamadashvili. But where does it leave Alisson? Where does it leave Kelleher? These are the questions that I have for you. And Virgil van Dijk, the four-time PFA Team of the Year centre-back. The GOAT for me. Right, tomorrow we have the match preview for the Brentford game. Looking forward to doing that. A bit of a deep dive into Brentford, who won their first game of the season, as did Liverpool, in convincing style in the end. So big up to Brentford. They'll be coming up to Anfield, hopeful. I doubt Ivan Tony will play. He's still maybe going to the Saudi league. Um, so lots to talk about. And then, of course, on Sunday, I'll be at the game, right? The first Premier League game back at Anfield. I can't wait. I will be there. Um, so if you are at the game, make sure you come over, say hi, and give us your thoughts on the fan cams after. But that's been your On The Radar for today. Don't forget, this video is brought to you by Football Prizes, right? The link is in the description. It costs £3.95 to buy a ticket, and you could be walking home after the raffle is made live on Facebook with a signed. Jurgen Klopp framed shirt, right? It doesn't get much better than that for less than a pint. You know I mean, there's no way where you can get a pint for three ninety five or less anymore. Um, so, guys, listen. Um, thanks for watching. See you again here tomorrow. All the best. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you check out the rest of the channel too. There's other stuff you'll enjoy for sure. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Cop TV, the, the voice, voice of football's, football's most famous, famous dad. dad. Come on.